Hi, it's Mike Del Signore, and in today's video, I want to talk about a couple of cases that may be decided by the U.S. Supreme Court, and both of these cases involve the First Amendment uh, and how that's interpreted by the courts. Um, the First Amendment is our law that protects freedom of speech, um, and it's the goal of the First Amendment is to create a marketplace of ideas so government is not censoring or regulating content. So first case I want to talk about is called Hunt versus New Mexico. And this was a case where a grad student posted some comments on Facebook and was censored by his university. He was a grad student in the medical school and he made some very um, egregious, derogatory, uh, inappropriate comments pretty much by any standard on Facebook. He, he um was critical of Democrats, and I think his most inflammatory comment was that he he was saying abortion is worse than what the uh, Nazis were doing during during World War II. So his comments were certainly inappropriate and wrong uh, by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm sure he got a lot of negative criticism on Facebook where he posted it. Um, but the issue is, was his speech protected by the First Amendment. Could the university censor him? So what happened was he was disciplined by the university. He, he got what, what I view as sort of a minor disciplinary sanction. Um, he then appealed that to the district court. He filed suit under 1983, and that's your federal civil rights statute. So if, you, if you're claiming rights are being violated, that's the mechanism to bring that to court. He brought a 93 act, three act, 80, 1983 action rather uh, to court. Um, the case was dismissed by the district court. They granted summary judgment. Um, he then um, appealed, um, lost at the appellate court, and then uh, brought the case to the U.S. Supreme Court. And one of the arguments is, one of the reasons why they, they dismissed his case is the, this doctrine of qualified immunity. So if your constitutional rights are violated allegedly, but they're not clearly defined, it's a defense uh, for a state actor, it has to be a clearly defined right. There's various case law um, from different jurisdictions going different directions on this. and But generally, and I think he's got a good argument, um, a good First Amendment claim, because the First Amendment precludes um, restriction on speech verse, based on content. So there was a case from Virginia, a, a 1995 decision, uh, Rosenberg versus Virginia, where the university tried to divvy up funds um, for student organizations, but didn't want to give funds to a religious group. Um, the court said that's a content restriction. You have to be content neutral in uh, providing funds. Um, there's been other cases where, uh, a case called Reed, uh, where the town tried to regulate signs. They tried to say, well, if it's a political sign, it's going to be this size. It's a different kind of sign, and it's at this size. So the court said, no, you, you can't do that. You can't have any content uh, regulation on speech. Um, if you can put up a sign, you put whatever you want on it. The government can't say that one speech is deserving of a bigger sign versus another. So. This speech, um, the key thing about his speech is it was private. So it's off campus, it's on his personal Facebook account. So schools can regulate communication when the idea is it's gonna disrupt the school, uh, when it's gonna have an impact to, to intimidate uh, the students. And there was a case that I found um, that, that said just that, that, um, that because the speech was directed at a student, it could be regulated, but here, the speech was not directed at anybody. It was a controversial, controversial and wrong and inappropriate political message, I suppose, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it was basically a, a rant that you see all the time on Facebook, frankly. Uh, you see people saying comments that don't make sense. And what happens? People say, you're, you're ridiculous. They unfriend the person. Uh, but can the a government entity get involved and say, and punish somebody for that. And I think he's got a good argument. I think this US Supreme Court could take this case because of, of the implications of how um, speech is regulated on the internet. Um, and I think ultimately um, it was a violation of his First Amendment rights because if he said it's based on the content, they didn't like the message, he's being censored. 
if he had said something more mundane, he wouldn't have been censored. If he said something that wasn't so outrageous, he wouldn't have been. It's because of the message was so inflammatory uh, that he was censored for his speech. Now, people confuse uh, speech all the time. They say, well, it's speech, so I can't be prosecuted. So speech, when it's combined with conduct, uh, can be punished. So if his speech was threatening, all states have laws prohibiting any kind of threat. So you can't threaten somebody. That's a, that, that, in that case, you're not being punished for the content or the message, but for the threat and for, uh, for something other than the content. It's for the act of the threat, not based purely on the communication. So, um, and he, he cited another case, Virginia versus Black, where um, the court precluded, um, said that um, the cross burning was unconstitutional. Was unconstitutional. And that, in that case, the reason they said that was because um, the cross burning wasn't directed towards a particular individual. So it didn't have the intent to sort of incite um, animosity, riots, chaos. It was just pure speech. So that's one case before the U.S. Supreme Court. I think that's very compelling. There's another case that I, I think is equally compelling. Supreme Court doesn't hear every case, but this is also a case that I've, um, I'm watching. And this case in, deals with the um, so-called revenge porn laws. So um, in this case, uh, a woman named Beth Austin um, found out her her uh, boyfriend was essentially cheating on her with the neighbor. So she broke off the relationship and then the boyfriend said, well, she's nuts. That's why the relationship ended. They had a shared account where he was sending pictures of himself and his girlfriend back and forth. So they had a shared iCloud account. She grabs the photo and sends it to her friend saying, no, I didn't go crazy. He was cheating on me. Look at the pictures. She gets prosecuted under the revenge porn laws. And I think, um, I think this this uh, case, I, I think it's probably more ripe for the court to review than even the Hunt case because uh, the Illinois Supreme Court said that that was fine. So the, the statute didn't say you had to have an intent to defame, to embarrass the person, to humiliate them. Like, so these laws, are, that's the purpose of these laws. People find images, they're mad at their ex, they post all these pictures. This This, the intent clearly was to clarify to bring the truth to light of the situation um so image so uh, images and um photography all that can be a form of an expression it's it's equally protected under the first amendment as as mere words so she was being punished for for essentially her speech to clarify her name to shed light on the situation so I think this is, that's also a very interesting First Amendment case, and I think the court uh, would take a look at that. So if you have questions about the First Amendment, if you have a case, so First Amendment issues sometimes uh, recently came up in the Michelle Carter case where the, the um, Ma Massachusetts Supreme Court had decided whether, our, whether she was being punished for mere words alone under our involuntary manslaughter statute. And our court said, no, she was punished for the words which cause contributed to this uh, individual taking his life. It wasn't mere words. It was words that had the impact effect of um, having uh, Conrad Roy, the, the, the gentleman, that young, young man that passed away, to kill himself. So we have this distinction in the law between um, whether words and conduct. In other words, this, all states have solicitation laws. So that's speech, right? But it's not the speech that's being punished. It's the act, the conduct of, of what the person is intending and doing. Uh, these two cases, I think, really good cases. Um, the distinction between uh, content regulation and content neutral restriction on speech. Uh, I think the Hunt case, excellent case for the U.S. Supreme Court to kind of define um, the right of free speech on the internet. If you have questions about this, feel free to contact me. I'm on Twitter, Facebook. My name is Michael Del Signore. I'm happy to talk to anybody. 781-686-5924. It's my cell. Call, text, anytime.